check back, flop, and turn. Turn could maybe be a bet. Actually, I don't have any. Um, I don't block the straights. So I might plan to check raise though. Yeah. Um, that that's the exact correct thought process. Cool. You're, you're dude. One coaching session, you're playing already insane, calibrating. This is insane, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're doing good. Good evening, guys. With the uh, latest release of the PLO Advanced Master Course at Upswing, Dylan Weissman, who was a co-creator of the course along with Chris Weiner, decided to do a coaching session with me on my thirty-three dollar PLO tournament win. Uh, so he was just teaching me basically how bad I am and what I can do to improve. So hopefully you guys find some value in this video and have fun. What's ooh, what size are you going to use? I'm, honestly, question. my only size was just pot. I didn't think about what other size would be good here. I probably should have went something like, I don't know, 3x, 3.5x or something, but I went for yeah, the top. Like, I would have probably gone for like 3x in this spot um, because this, this is a hand that's strong enough to be able to play over three streets. Yeah. And so you could you can raise flop, bet like a media like a half pot sizing on the turn and then a, a half pot sizing on the river to get all of his money in. And then also <laughs> I like how you're smiling in this thing. <laughs> Cuz like now the this turn comes and yeah. you bet and now you and now you bet full pot on this on this and this is literally one of the nut low turns for you cuz you don't yeah, have a king yeah, or yeah, 10 in your terrible. hand. Right. And so when you've raised the flop, he he is not supposed to lead this turn super often. He's more supposed to lead board pairs, but when he does lead this turn you're just like fucking confused. And in, with your specific combination, at in a tournament, you're supposed to fold if he pops into you. I'm pretty sure. Wow, yeah, that makes plenty of sense. He's a bunch of king ten. I'm, yeah. Sick like if, he's ICM. Lead, it, if he's lead calling in a mm -hmm. spot where there's sick ICM, yep. and you have queen queen nine in your hand with the queen of hearts. No blockers. Yeah, yeah you're just, it's yeah. like it's just so much more likely for him to have a straight. Well, I think I check back. Checking back here is a great play if you do it. Do a path. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah, dirty it's like river. a shit run out. Yeah, this is a pretty. But this is this happens all. This is why you play smaller flop sizings. Is because it's yes, always going to be a shit run out. Of course. That's how PLO works. Of like course. there's always there's always a shit run out, and so you have to be able to have enough play on future streets and be able to build your range in such a way that for all the shit runouts you're protected in appropriate spots over time. Checking back the river here is fine. This is a terrible lead by him. Yeah, all, yeah, like that, limp call. I terrible like yeah his combination is just horrid uh the three jack eight nine uh no bueno it's a fold pre especially in a bounty tournament when you're out of position and covered and you're near the final table like not not what the people want do you think there are any bluffs he might have on that river that bet call raise check check turn like the, he couldn't find any bluffs could he possibly on this river that's a really good question i'm I'm, ha I'm actually having trouble building a bluffing range for him it have to be specifically like, like ten nine ace, ace deuce of diamonds. Yeah, ace ten ten, with the ace of hearts. Ace, 10, and like, good. yeah, like yes, ace ten ten. That's a nice one. Um, but 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 he should be leading that on the turn at some frequency, right? Mm -hmm. When, uh, and so it's it's pretty close, but it's gonna be really hard for him to find bluffs there. And uh, this should be interesting. Like, what about limps here? We got a final table. At the at the FT with this with this, this stack, not just if, fold. Okay. This, this, this hand's trash. <laughs> yeah. Just play. Wait, what about if, if the hand is shit, completes. just get rid. Yeah, the hand shit, just get rid of it. Okay, don't even complete here. No, so that it, it actually goes back to the conversation we had earlier, and that in PLO, if you're playing multi ways, it's so much more important to have nutted combinations because yeah. the reverse implied odds are so heavy. So let's say you flop like queen seven here. This is about as good as it gets for your spot, and now you're. <laughs> Now you're just fucking confused because yeah. like yeah, every, every turn card trash. is bad. Yeah, yeah, every turn card's trash, and so you, it's just really important to pick the appropriate starting combinations. No, that makes a lot of sense. Not like what do you do here? You you actually aren't supposed to lead this flop because you don't have robust enough equity. Um, are you familiar with that term, robust equity? Robust equity. Ro robust equity. Robust no. So robust equity just means that your hand plays really well on future streets. So a hand okay. that has a ton of robust equity would be, let's say the flop is 10, 9, 3 with two hearts, and you have ace, king, queen, jack with two hearts. Uh -huh, your, yeah. hand, your, hand, your hand has a ton of robust equity. Same with top set. Top, top set can usually play really well on future streets. Whereas hands that have more immediate equity on that flop would be um, middle set, no back doors. So it's a little more challenging, uh, like if you have like 9, 9, 4, 4. That has more immediate equity, but less robust equity. 
Okay. So your hand has pretty good immediate equity with the queen seven, but it's got shit for robust equity because yep. the only good run out is like seven two. And so the like the probability of you being able to take aggressive action moving forward in time is just is not going to be a thing. Right, that makes plenty of sense. Chat, let us know if you have any questions, by the way. I know I'm just like talking about shit, but I love PLO tournaments, man. Like I get to play, I, I, I especially love playing like big PLO tournaments because there's so much ruckus in them. Uh, so like this spot, checking is completely fine and you're going to be checking and folding. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for, especially for pot. I hope I fold here. Especially for pot. I hope you fold too. But I mean, you won the tournament, so and it feels like you're. Sorry, my, on my on my channel, the meme is that if you won, that means you played it correctly. It's like yep, a pure results oriented channel. So if you won the tournament, that means you made the right play here, no matter what. What about like um, Ace Five of Spades here? Would we find the call? Uh, what's your other right? card? What do you know? What if we if cards? we have Queen Seven Ace Five of Spades? Queen Seven Ace Five is going to be a call, definitely. Okay, cool. Well, found the yeah. fold. Nice. Good job. Good job. What are these? What's this two card game that you're playing? So did you limp the button? Uh, about to find out. I'm guessing. Hang on. It was yeah. It would have been call call. It's it's ten twenty. So it would have been call call. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna keep switching back here though. That's okay. You're good. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this, so yeah, that that hand's not a limp on the button. Um, it, especially in tournaments when it's a limped pot. And people, you can actually, you can build limping ranges in tournaments in, in different situations, um, but you never want to limp in with something that's not going to do well multi ways. In this hand, let's say you flop yeah. a set or you flop a flush draw, it doesn't matter because it's always going to be like heavy reverse implied odds. No, this is trash. Looking at it now, I'm not sure why I did it. It's a six high flush draw as well. What about like a nut flush draw bottom pair, like ace like, deuce two six, nut flush draw? It's still a fold. Wow. Okay. Still a fold. Yeah, the um. Having low pairs in your hand are just reverse implied odd nightmares. That's mm -hmm. just the way that it works. Okay. Um, and also the fact that like you're you're only gonna flop a flush draw some small percentage of the time, and that's the only way your hand gets robust equity, and it only has that flush draw, is the thing. Yeah, be, uh, I lagged and timed out aces. That was pretty annoying. That's <laughs> funny. Oh, that sucks, dude. Yeah. What's what's your ABI generally? Uh, One hundred and eighty. No, so three hundred and twenty is a thing. That's that sucks. <laughs> uh, all right what else we got that good fold thanks easy peasy do you think about yeah, a, uh, limping much here in the high jack or the low jack uh, side? in the low jack i'm not gonna limp i'm just gonna play tight as fuck actually okay. this is a good spot to talk about the way that this final table functions so if yeah. we look at all the stack sizes you're really close and so there's actually not as much of an ICM vacuum. You're a little more free to, to play post-flop because you're not being disincentive. Like right now, winning chips is actually worth a lot because you can create a you can create the ICM vacuum if you get more chips. So like for example, in this spot, it actually wouldn't be bad to take a high variant situation because everyone is so close. Um, whereas in a situation like if you have, let's say that Warwick has 2 million and then everyone else has this stack, and yep. then one person has 400k, literally, you should be folding almost like 90 something percent of your range until that low player goes out because of how close equities run. Yeah. Like, and, I'm, and that's just, I'm sure that makes a lot of sense to you because you get ICM. Yeah, of course. That makes plenty of sense. Yeah. Right, like that's... The spot. All right, and, so... and like also sizing pre from this bloke. Like, what's your sizing pre here? So, so in PLA tournaments, the way that you want to think about sizings is you can actually kind of create a correlation between what you would do in hold'em tournaments. So in hold'em tournaments, if you want to generate the maximum fold equity, you ball it, right? Um, and in PLO tournaments, it's the same thing. If you want to generate the maximum equity, you bet full pot. The thing is, though, that there's a cap to that. And so there's only so much fold equity you can generate. And the probability of getting called is much higher. So generally uh -huh. speaking, this 2.7 sizing doesn't accomplish anything. You either want to be generating as much fold equity as possible, which is raising full pot, or just entering the pot with like a two point, like a min raise or a two point one. I usually am playing a min raise strategy when we get to this uh, big blind count, almost almost consistently, because it's not like you're generating more. Like the um, the elasticity for how much more fold equity you get 
given your uh, bet sizing at this stack depth isn't very high. Like two versus 2.7, you're not going to generate very more, like you're not going to generate more folds of the 2.7 sizing than mm -hmm. you are at the two sizing. So you're just wasting that 0.7 big blinds. Whereas let's say that you have like 15 big blinds and you're in the big, then playing a full pot sizing is actually valid because you're applying enough pressure to your stack size. Okay. So like 2.7 is not a thing. It yeah. should be a min raise. This... Also min raising 4.5, not a thing either. <laughs> Break. There we go. Marty, that was very nice of you. Thank you. Two and a half here on the button is what I went with for 40 effective. For 40 effective? I would have probably gone smaller, like okay. 2.1. Uh, but not like, you're not making a big mistake. You don't know. Um, this is, this is a, a great linking. spot. What yeah, do you, dude, I'm so excited right what now. Do you, what do you do on this flop? I think I'm always checking here. Like, we have, like, no flush rolls already huge. The sixes are terrible for us. I bet one fourth pot. What? Why, though? We don't like because the... Because you get calls from kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines, eights. Dude, there and... aren't they all calling for a third? What? Aren't they all yeah, calling? Yeah, that, that's good. You want them to. You have aces. Yeah, but... Can't we size up with a good hand? Like, why, why are we going one quarter, not a third here? Is quarter just a preferred uh, sizing on the low pad boards? Um, so, one, uh, one fourth and one third, like, that's yeah. ambiguous between one fourth and one yeah, third. Of it's mostly like one fourth, one third, or a large sizing. Mm -hmm. um, you want to play a large sizing when you have a polarity advantage. So, if you have more sixes in your range than the other person, you could use a larger yeah. sizing, but that's not true. He has more sixes than you. Of course. So, you have to use, so you have to use a sizing that gets him to continue wider, which means you play a smaller sizing. Yeah, I just thought in this spot with the ICM and the fact that I really hate seeing a check raise, checking is yeah. preferred over a small bet, but... See, but the thing is, you, there's not a ton of ICM because you're in last place. Yeah, but I'm like equal with five other stacks, so it's essentially a pretty ICM heavy. That, that's, that's, val that's valid. I think that... Well, I'd have to look... So I'm not... You, you, that point might be enough to switch it, but you're not going to get check raise at as high as a frequency here in a tournament i think as maybe you should be getting check raise yeah and so if everyone's like playing perfect at equilibrium you can find a check with this with some frequency like for so maybe a good way to balance this would actually be if you have one heart in your hand you can bet it because the probability of getting check raise is lower mm -hmm. but this combination can go into a check okay i'm probably at this final table still playing the small sizing because it just makes it easier to play future streets when you're the one taking aggressive action like same same on this turn if you check the flop, you should definitely be betting this turn when he doesn't bet again. Okay. Because <laughs> well, it's like, you're, yeah. you, you, that's, I mean, it, in PLO, there's this feeling when the board pairs, you're like, he has four cards, I'm fucked. Yeah. Like, he has to have it. And that's a, like, that's a gut reaction that a lot of players, not just you, that almost everyone has when they first start learning PLO. And you just have to take a deep breath and know that they're they're still not going to have it every time, and you have to start to get value from these hands. Yeah. I suppose my question is, what is big blinds leading range look like looks like what does it look like when it goes check check on the flop because i feel like he's drawing stone dead when he checks the, f the turn as well so i almost want to let him get there um there is no such like what would he get there with he get, get there with like so, like some broadway hand like is he how many heart commas is he checking the turn with i feel like he's just going to be betting a bunch of heart commas on the turn so like so in plo you have to think about it a little differently than hold'em because getting there is usually more nutted yeah. Um, so him getting there would be rivering a full house with like nines, tens, jacks. Uh, yeah. Nines, tens, jacks. Oh, I forgot about all the um, pairs he can be holding. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and, and it, there's just so many combinations. And so it's actually a little bit better to deny some equity. Like in, in PLO, equi like um, the reason why aggression is so helpful in PLO is because it has this dual phenomena of generating value as well as generating fold equity. And that's how you, that's what you get, like Munker thinks about it as gain value, which is like, how much equity am I getting from his um, hands that are worse than mine? And how much equity am I getting when he folds everything else? And so you want to like, and so it kind of makes sense to generate more aggression um, and you don't want them to get there because it's just like, it's going to be the nuts when they get there more mm -hmm. often than not. All right. I can this get behind is, that. And this is a, this is a puke river spot. Yeah. Like a super puke river spot. <laughs> I thought, like, I don't think you're about to call that river. Really? No, you're not because um, you have all, so in PLO, it's kind of what I talked about before. You you modulate your calling, your raising frequencies given your side cards. You have four cards in your hand 
all of which you'd want to be in your opponent's hand. So if it's four cards out of the deck, you would love your, hand, your opponent to have ace, ace, king, queen in his hand. So it's so much more likely that the density of your opponent's range is towards the lower end of the deck. And so this hand, even though it's high in absolute hand strength, by the time you get to the river, what's more important is your blockers. And your blockers mm. are the worst blockers because they, they yeah. remove the cards from your hand that you want your opponent to have, which means that there's a higher density of him having the cards that you don't want him to have. Yeah, in my brain, I was just thinking he's always going to barrel every straight draw, like every gutter, every open into here, like this is a snap down, snap cold down. But yeah, I mean, like what, what hands would you like to lead on that turn as a big blinds once it goes check check? I, I would love to bet his hand on the turn. Okay. His hand, like, I actually... And you go for pop on this pretty good ball for big blind, wouldn't you? Um, no, I'd bet very small in, in a tournament. Because you, cause you're just going to get to generate so... Like, when you check back the flop, you raise pre, and then you checked back the flop on this board texture. So your range is comprised of, like, the high stuff like king, queen, jack, ten. Sometimes some over pairs like queens, jacks, ten. Uh -huh. But you don't, have, you don't have to bet large to make to force indifference from those hands okay. you can just bet very small and then if you continue just like blast the river like yep. it's it's usually in plo a lot of the times like the first aggressive action will be smaller and then the second aggressive action if you take another one is either going to be small or large depending on the run out okay <laughs> kapu thank you for that i wish i had all the answers to life but i could just talk about plo tournaments uh, all right he comes in with the limp here. Check is great. What is your, like, you, do you find any, like, what are your, like, high equity bluffs here that want to just, like, pot it? Do you have anything that pots here that isn't the obvious, like, aces suited? So, so the way that you think about bluffs are, you, they're not necessarily bluffs. So they're just hands that have tons of equity and yep. really good removal. Yep. So, so, like, ace, queen, jack, seven, double suited. Love it. Because it. So that would be a hand that you can find some aggression with. Um, but hands like, for example, six, seven, eight, nine, I would not raise that hand because it, it's not going to generate a lot of folds because it's more likely your opponent has high cards. Yep, that makes uh, sense. Yeah. This is this interesting. Is... See a lead? Yeah. Uh, you can either raise or fold. Yeah, I don't mind folding. I have like my worst queen here. I can't. It's tough to improve as well. So, so, so I think that a, so if you pause it here, this is actually a really cool, a cool concept. So, um, the queens that you want to call are the queens that have cards above the, that's the second what I was thinking. card on the that's board. That's what I was just thinking, dude. Yeah, yeah, you got it right. Hell yeah. So like this combination, you only have one card above an eight, and it brings a straight. So you're kind of just like dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got it. So yeah, th yeah this queen's going to be a fold. Cool. When it check when the when the dude, I is. thought about doing wild shit like potting this river, like raising so many checks. It's so weird. This river's funky. Um, the, you want the ace more than the queen, unfortunately, to to find to find the river. Okay. Uh, wow. Like the queen, yeah, the ace is just like, because for example, let's say that he, like it. I know it seems kind of weird because you took aggression on the flop, but the the ace just blocks so many of his nutted two pair combinations that that's what you're going to need in order to take like if you have a hand like um if you have a hand that anti blocks the straight draws so you d you wouldn't want like nine ten jack in your hand with the ace to raise uh -huh, because uh -huh. that means that you're that you're that he's more likely to have some two pair combination but if you have like ace king three five and you wow. somehow called the flop for example or in the, or actually or in this case it would, it would probably be what would you show up with with an ace? It's actually hard to find bluffs because what are you calling the flop with? I don't know. Ace I don't, I don't four, know. Yeah, I don't know. Ace eight, four like... suited, jack ten. <laughs> you, you see, but that, but that's bad because then you have the jack ten, which is going to make it more yeah. likely that your but opponent has. You, two you're saying you would like to bluff raise this river with top pair a lot. I, I think that that's the card that you're supposed to raise it the most with, uh -huh. but it's hard to show up with the top pair combinations. So maybe because you don't have them as much, this is a good point. You have to raise some of the queens because you're just not going to have as many of the top pair combinations. Yeah. Um, and then you block top two pair, which is which is still sufficient. Just usually you, like the central bluff. It, that also just means you don't get to play a big uh, raising a big bluffing range on this river. Is pretty much the answer. Yeah. But also his line's pretty weird, right? Like leading half his lines, shank, yeah. half. That shit, that shit makes no sense. Yeah. Like it, it, a lot of the time it's like queen eight, 
or like pocket twos yep. that he showed up like something weird like that trying to would check be, his turn or something yeah exactly yeah. exactly for the open here we go here's a good one 28 bigs Ooh. kings one so i i want to call here that's what i'm thinking in my brain i yeah i want to call also Generally, like at this many big blinds, I'd have to, I, I don't have my like 28 big blind PLO final table stuff on lock. Um, so I'd, I'd have to run it through a solver, but this is going to be really close to a call. If you had ace king king, 100% three bet, and it's not even close. Um, um because just also the stacks have changed a bit now. I'm the shorty, we've got 25, 25, 50, 40, 50, 50. Yeah, so so you're allowed to definitely enter the pot, um, a little wider now, right? Because mm -hmm. you're because your ICM is, um, less uh like less evenly distributed but the thing in this specific spot that's really important is that when you don't have an ace in your hand the value of your kings against your opponent's range just fucking plummets like yeah. no that's so true right kings are trash yeah. with i assume is what you're trying to say yeah yeah pretty okay. yeah, that's very true well someone's and saying then, someone's saying king king double, 10 7 double, double suited, suited. Would you think double suited um double suited is very important but i still think that without the ace in it it cuts it close um so double like double suited combinations of PLO are amazing. Monker loves them. Yeah. I think double suit is the nuts a lot of the time, just because you're allowed to play uh, a lot of flops. Another thing here that's kind of sick is that you could like three bet fold sometimes mm -hmm, if you're not mm -hmm. playing a full pot sizing. You can play like a five point nine fold to a four bet sizing here, and so maybe like single suited kings could go into that because we still have just enough playability. Um, but at this ICM spot, that might be a little too FPSy, and you're just like. You're kind of getting ahead of yourself. Um, yeah. With this combination, I think a call is fine. And if it, if I didn't ace, if my sevens and ace is a three bet, and then just a three bet get in. Okay. Well, I went through a range of emotions. Yeah. Hovered over the R mics. Yeah. R S R Schubert. Yeah. Yep, he was Ryan. Like, uh, Ryan. Yeah. Ryan's definitely on the same page. Um, now what do you do? You got the top set. I think I. I think I always check here. It's so easy for big blind to put a bunch of flushes. Checking is great. Okay. Um, checking is very good. You can either check or, or because you have one heart in your hand, you can bet one fourth pot. And you could argue it's a very important heart as well because most nut flushes are going to be C betting, right? Unless, yep. and unless, so, uh, so, unless I so don't to be it, checking a bunch more the way here. So it's mostly just the fact that you have one heart, which lowers the probability of your opponent making a flush. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the main point. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and because you have top set, that's the, um, like, I would never bet pocket queens or pocket jacks, but uh, pocket kings is like the top, probably like the top of your bluffing range here. So this actually might've been a really good spot to find a small bet, just because you generate tons of folds, which is phenomenal for you. You're not gonna get check raised often. And when you do check, get check raised, you just fold. Like, it's not a huge deal. I fold top set to a check raise? Check raising frequency. What are you gonna do? Look how many big blinds you have. Are you just gonna call it in, getting it in bad? Can't we pill try and get there? Is that bad? Yeah, that's bad. Because <laughs> you're, because you're, dude, I mean, dude, dude, a... that sounds so fucking atrocious to bet for the top set. I'd rather just check it back. Yeah, but you want to generate aggression, uh -huh. and you, you, you cap the amount of aggression your opponent can take by having top set and a ten and a heart in your hand. And so when you do get aggressed against, their range is just like so much more sparse for bluffs. Yeah. Because you have the cards in your hand that you want that he's supposed to have. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, it's Dupilo is a game that just like you have to rewire your brain. You're like, yeah, oh, I yeah, guess I'm yeah, gonna yeah. bet fold top set on a monotone board. Like that's just that's okay. That's what it is. <laughs> so interesting turn card. It's the parts. I'm checking this back. Yeah, I don't really know what the point of betting here is. Um, you can generate some if this is a cash game you could maybe find one small bet to generate value from the same straights and then pop the river when the board pairs that's in a cash game but in a tournament Ooh, where that's fucking genius yeah so you can so <laughs> like because you have one you have a heart in your hand so it's more much more likely that you're sharing straights than then you have him at them having a flush and let's say that they just call the turn and the river bricks out you can also turn your hand into a bluff sometimes which is a thing that happens i love it yeah Having one heart in your hand here is just like a real thing. What about your betting range as a big blind here on this turn? Would you want to lead anything? 
Um, you yeah, actually you do. You want to lead the, your small flushes. Okay. You want to, but like, cause what are the stats? Yeah, you you can definitely lead small flushes here because you're gonna get value from straights. Um, I'm never betting. I'm I'm pretty much never playing a large sizing on the turn as the big blind here. I'm gonna play a lead small or check range, and I can play check raises with the all with the combinations that have the ten of hearts in it, both my flushes and my bluffs. Um, and then I'm gonna play Whoa, small bets. That's with... disgusting playing a check raise. I love it. So. Oh, in PLO, the easiest way to think about what you're bluffing is what hand are you mirroring? So if I am supposed to check raise the nut flush, that means that I should also be check raising all the combinations that have the nut flush blocker. And that's that's like a very intuitive way when you have four cards in your hand to think about balance. I just thought of something as well. If you're a big blind, you have like 10 eight of hearts here. You're not mm -hmm. playing a, wait, no. If you, if you have 10 nine of hearts, you're not playing a row. You're playing a straight flush, aren't you? Yeah, you're playing a straight flush, which is the same thing, effectively. <laughs> yeah, same thing. Effectively, that makes yeah. sense. Just a side yeah. note, it came through my head, I thought it was no. funny. No, but 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 it's a six-card straight flush, so it's even prettier. Yeah, and if you have the ten of hearts in your hand, non-flush, as a big blind here, are you pure planning to check-raise it? Do you do any leads? Yeah. Oh, I'm, pu I'm, I'm pure check-raising it. Okay, okay. With the ten of hearts. And I'm also potting the river. Love it. A lot of the time. Like that's the only that's probably the only card that I'm uh, gonna because sometimes because the the turn will check through when your opponents have a lot of like hands like yours now imagine if the big if the big one just pops into your face you're facing indifference now you're just like with your combination you'd be calling because you have one heart in your hand but let's say you didn't have a heart in your hand you just had the bear straight with king king ten you're you you have to fold most likely yeah. when the big one pops into you okay cool. And what happens here? Looks like, what's the big blinds here? Was it an open call and I completed? I may have completed this. That's probably fine. Like that combination, you're probably allowed to play as a call from the big blind. That we don't know. Um, yeah, I think it, it was looks like an open. Call. It looks like an open flat. So, this yeah, this combination is a fine flat, and then it's just a fold on the flop. Yeah, and. Um, <laughs> what about if all the stacks are even? We're still calling? If all the stacks are even, we're still calling, because this combination plays well enough multi-way. Okay, cool. Because it's going to be able to dominate all like the lower straighty things. Um, and, and it's also like, in at this, at, this, um, at this big blind count, flopping top two pair is very important. And that hand, when it flops top two pair, also usually has backup. And so there's, yeah. a, there's a, like, not all top two pairs are created equal. So when your top two pair has the ability to generate aggression on future streets, it has more robust equity, it's worth a lot more, which is why the higher straighty hands get a lot of oomph, especially the double suited high straighty hands. Munker loves that shit. Dude, we're getting, this is like, more people are coming to watch this than when we no started. Shit. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. good. So we've got 200 viewers since I started. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> sick. Um, interesting hands here. Do people turn into the future? This Dude, I'm getting into hand. them. I'm getting very <laughs> into them. Okay, hopefully I fucking show it, Jesus. Okay, I'm guessing I just folded it to an... I'm guessing there was an open and I just folded the queen-queen. That's fine. Hang on, let me see if yeah. I find it here. Here we go. So yeah, you wouldn't play this as a flat versus any open, would you? No, that's no, fold is fine, especially with your stock size. And uh, we're um, not... I, I'd, pl I'd play it as a full pot from the button though Ooh, it needs more protection doesn't want to yeah that makes yeah. sense and I'd, I'd, I'd also fold it to a three bet love it i love it yeah and what about queen jack seven double suited would you still fold it to a three bet i would probably min raise it oh, so the one suit you want to pot the double suit min raise yeah, it's just a difference in robust equity yeah okay and that and that's that i'm not like a thousand i'm not a hundred percent sure on that but that's like a really good way to kind of figure out because um, double suited hands have the ability to play more streets than single suited hands do, right? Yeah, it's, it's a good rule of thumb. Is, yeah. And um, you're happy to min raise call a three bet with the double suited here or not? With it, so having two queen, like I'd much rather have like queen jack ten seven double. Um, but it, this yeah. like it'd probably be fringe queen queen jack seven, and I'd have to look it up. I'm most likely calling it because it's going to be able to hit enough flops. But it also depends who's three betting me. Um, for example, if it's Crimea River who has a very uh, short stack or a competitive stack to you, I'm more likely to fold versus Lava who's able to apply pressure to you. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and that's and that's like that's a huge thing because especially in PLO tournaments, the large stack is incentivized to just beat the shit out of the smaller stacks because of how close equities run. And so in this specific situation, if this player, if that player is raising me, I'm much more likely to call to find a call versus cry me a river who's um, less incentivized to beat you up because of stack sizes. Of course, it's even of more course. incentivized how it lasts you. It's kind of crazy that you're more inclined to call queen jack 10 7 double suited over queens jack 7. <laughs> that kind of blows it, my it, mind. It, 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 flops, it flops better. Yeah. It, it has a higher probability of interacting with the flop. I gotta rewire myself. That yeah. makes perfect it's, sense. Yeah. But like, so let's say, for example, though, that you had 10 big blinds. Then you would rather have queen, queen, jack 7. Because yep. then you don't need more playability. You just need more absolute hand strength. Yep. That makes sense. Mm hmm. All right, I love it. Okay, fold that. Here we go. This has to be a fold pre, right? Definitely a fold pre, not even close. Good. Well, I don't think I will though. <laughs> but this is good. Like, look at how much, like, just from us talking for half an hour. Yeah, like I'm tanking at the spot now and not to fold. Okay, I folded anyway. But... <laughs> Well, I definitely didn't want to fold. You can see, I was like, I got equity, bro. Let's go. This is also a very interesting hand. If it like folds to us, what are you supposed to do? I would guess limp raise is pretty cool. I would fold it. Wow. Um, but it... At, at the at this stack depth, you need to be able to find aggression. Um, it's like just not. It's not incentive like you're not going to be able to generate enough folds with a limp re-raise and your hand doesn't have really good hot fold equity because it only has a pair of threes mm -hmm. also playing as a limp call you're gonna have to fold way too many flops and so yeah I, just, I, like... that's yeah i can get behind that limp call is trash limp, but limp raise i feel like his aggression frequency is so high that limp raising makes sense yes and he will just call you and then have <laughs> yeah, that's like... terrible you're right yeah you're, you're just, he's just gonna call and then you have ace 10 3 3 with one like and the spr is gonna be i don't what is it like 1.5 you're just fucked <laughs> what if um the positions are switched and he still has the same stack and he like pots it into me do we want to play a call a three I'd probably fold. No, I'd okay fold. okay cool yeah um ace 10 10 really good ace 10 3 3 really bad okay sick like at this like the hot cold equity of two tens at 20 bigs is actually pretty good okay Pop that. Dude, your chat's getting hypey on PLO. This is this fam, is a... fam. We're we're in the we're in the golden age of PLO right now. Like people thought that it was too hard to solve, and now we have the answers. Like now is the time. That's uh, exciting. This is this is well played. This is Definitely well played. Oh my god, yeah. I can't believe yeah. I did this right. <laughs> I feel like yeah, I should be pot. actually. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Of course. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we we like our absolute strength of having aces. We got twenty bigs here. We're a short stack. We've got yeah. ice, no icing pressure. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. What's interesting though is what happens on because I think that let's say that if you get called, do you get called in this hand? Because we're gonna probably have. I think I get called in two spots here. Yeah, that's that's when it gets fun. No, no, I don't. Like, what okay. do you? Just one, but even just in one. Okay, now. Dude, it's look, this cunt kept saying, "Look, party fish with aces." Party like he, he he kept giving me shit the whole time. Like, dude, I just want to have fun. Yeah, ended up knocking him out for like to finish second, which is funny. But yeah, this is a, a weird one. This flop. I guess we just pot it right. Do we ever check this back? Actually, no. Checking um, back makes sense. I think this is a terrible. Checking flop. back at checking back's okay. Also, you can bet very small and bet fold. Yeah, bet folding makes me feel ill. He leads into me. I've got a nine as well. Nine, nine doesn't matter. Um, so doesn't his limp calling, his limp calling range is gonna be when you have two aces. So limp calling ranges, if they're played really well, usually have lots of like ace x in them. So like ace king five seven with the suit. Is going to play well as a limp call for it but the difference would be like if you have ace queen something something that's actually a better limp re-raise because it's more likely your opponent has kings therefore they can fold um when the when the flop has a king and he limp calls and you have two aces you're boned here like like you're uh -huh. you're you're just pretty much destroyed because you don't have the queen or the jack or the king which yeah, are yeah. very likely to be in a limp calling range when you have two aces in your hand I just play the fold fold's fine yeah that's good the nine's not that important when the straight's out there. Yeah, yeah. Dog, you came back and won this final table. That's beast. Dude, that's some gangster shit. Super gangster. Oh, this is... I, would, wait, a... I don't want to peel oh, versus... Yeah. I don't want to fold versus button as a short stack. I feel like I'm just going to... Now you want to no, fold. Okay, okay. Yeah. We're definitely defending blind versus bind though, right? We've got position. That's no, massive. No, this is a, no, it's Bro, a fold. Bro, we got position. Just hand, hand play. What flops do you want? 
I want a seven. I want a king. I want a queen. That's what I okay, want. Okay, and then if you had a king or a queen, they're like you don't have the nut king or queen, and the probability of improving on future streets sucks. Okay, okay, but you would definitely defend ace queen seven seven, ace jack seven seven, ace ten seven seven. Rainbow, no. One suit, ace nut. ten seven seven. One suit, ace ten seven seven. Nut suit, yes. Okay, good. I can well, like king that. queen seven seven. This hand is two hold'em hands. Like I know that that's more than you usually get. That's twice as many, but like it's still not great. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, and it's also when you. So this is actually really important. Um, when you have this specific stack size in a PLO tournament, uh, what's really important is to just find situations where you can build range advantages. And so what that means is like. Let's say that the like you're in this stack position, and then the button, who's the big stack, opens. That's when you're going to take the most aggression because they're going to have the widest range. Uh -huh, that makes sense. And so, and you just need to find, you need to um, push your equity as hard as you can. We would just have like a zero flatting range for Spartan here, would we? Oh uh, yeah, I would not be flatting here. Okay, cool. Ever. Yeah, never ever. Definitely good read there. Damn. All right, this is a fun hand. I think yeah, I end up potting it, but upon further review, okay. Yeah. I will, um, upon further review, I would have liked a limp, but limping is dumb as a short stack. I don't really, I'm not, there's not much incentive to limp as a shorty, so I guess just raise or fold with that current stack in general is good. Yeah, um, yeah that's exactly correct. And yeah. this hand is not quite call, not quite strong enough. The ace jack is really, really good with the nut suit, but the two nines just don't have the best, like they don't have enough hot and cold. If you have ace jack jack nine, I'm fine playing it as a pot and just getting it in and running it. But ace jack nine nine is, I think is the, like is, a, is kind of your inflection point. And wow. I probably wouldn't be raising it here. Okay. Oh, why is that limping? <laughs> nice. Gonna outplay Cheeky. them. Yeah, for your 12 digs. Yeah. You just wanna flop a set. Dude, flopping a set in PLO feels so good because it happens. Uh, so I think much more I did often. flop a set as well, and I played a gangster check back with like all the nut draws. Well, that's not, yeah, that sounds like it was viable. Yeah, end up checking back flop here four ways. Um, you check the flop. Yeah. I mean, so if you were playing a deep stack cash game, I'm actually a fan of the flop check because you just have so much of it, right? You have nut flush draw top set, which is phenomenal and when you have everything in plo it's actually great to play a flop check but in a tournament where it's much more important for you just not to lose mm -hmm. the tournament i think it's more important to just pop this flop and push your equity advantage okay um, but i don't like i think you have the right idea because you have so much of the flop that it's like what can they ever have kind of a thing yeah um, but because equities run so close if you check through and then the jack comes on the turn it's like now now you have to get it in bad if you're getting it in. Dude, you would much. really pot here with top set no. and that flush draw into four ranges on, on three on the flop, yeah. I would either no, so I would either pot a bit very small. Yeah, okay, cool. I would lean yeah. towards small with this particular yeah. hand. Yeah, small is also good because you can because yeah, it creates a perception of hold equity. Okay, nice. Yeah, this guy's so funny as well. He legit was like jacks on nines when I shoved river on him. <laughs> I was like, yep, yeah, spot on, I don't have any bluffs, mate. So yeah, checks right on a turn, I was afraid of 10-8. <laughs> and I was afraid like, pair the board. And, you sh and then... I mean, uh, as, you actually... as, as played though after the flop, turn check is pretty good, I think. No, turn check's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, turn check's fine. You can check all turn. And, and then lead river is small, but you make full houses and flushes. Okay. Um, what sizing do you use here? I just That's put everything. I didn't think about anything but pot, because I was like, I limped it, he has a bunch of 4x. Come and eat me, mate, let's go. Yeah. This is this is this is fine. Oh no, you're not all in. Yeah, it's fine. I would I, I would have not gone all in though. Was is what? Because in PLO tournaments, it's actually even more so than holding tournaments. Good to leave yourself with a small amount because the probability of running it up is just like you can just like spin, spin, spin. Yeah, kind of thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. So if this was all in for you, I'd have had you leave behind one big blind or something or half a big blind. Yeah. He says 9-9 nine, nine or Jack-Jack. This guy is... Or Jack-9 is Jack also pretty... Uh, Jack-9 is a great bluff here. Yeah, that'd be a sicko mode. Yeah, that's actually the bluff you're supposed to have. Yeah, that's your what I was thinking. Nine. Like Jack-9, Ace-King, double suited. I might limp yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. I fold that. Fold that. And we hate this end. Please. Look, I'm just... I just want to call everything. <laughs> 
cards. Yeah, dude, you have four cards. How could you ever miss? I know. So I got the I got the bottom. All right, and easy fold here. Mm -hmm. yeah, it takes a while for players to bust. It turns out. Okay, what happens here? So, in, specifically in PLO tournaments, you're just incentivized to play really tight. That's just how it works. Like everyone, the equities are really close. You got to play pretty tight. So it looks like this was. Fuck, what, were the, what was the big blind? Do you remember? I don't. Here we go. It's um, 40k now? Okay. So it was a limp pot. Limp pot, um, small blind calls, I check. Here we are. Facing a lead from small blinds. Right. Given what you know now, what would you do? A very easy fold here. Yeah, very easy fold. Have in real time. <laughs> it's fun when you it's situation. fun when you it's fun when you win a tournament and you're like, wait, what did I do? <laughs> like, <laughs> like how did I win this thing? Oh here we go. Uh, I end up potting the aces here, no so that's completely fine. You also can limp re-raise them. Ooh. Um with bad aces, those are the best ones to limp re-raise, actually, because uh, your probability of being able to flop a, like to have a good flop goes down. So you'd much rather, and you, if you're gonna have a limping range, you need to balance it with some aces, and you balance it with your worst ones because then you're just getting it in at, um, like if it goes five ways, you're just gonna either flop top set or fold, which is fine. You don't you lose one big blind, and then if you do get a raise, you can get it in heads up the majority of the time, which is really good. Um, and let's say you get called in two spots with ace ace five deuce rainbow, it doesn't feel very good. Um, and so yeah, this, yeah. so it's just like it's close. You don't have to like. I think raising is also fine. But if you're gonna build a limping range, I'd probably put these aces in that limping range. But how often am I getting called in two spots after potting in this spot? Not very often. Yeah. It's 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 not. So that's why I'm saying this is fine. I'm more just talking like if in situations where it's more likely for you to get potted in multiple spots, that's how I'd start to think about building that range. Yep. And what if you have twenty big blinds here with the same hands? Would you limp raise that as well, or look to it? Twenty big blinds are much more likely to limp this hand. Much okay. much much. Okay. Cool. Yeah, because because you're because like, if you pot this and get called in one flop, you have twenty bigs. There's gonna be seven on the. You know, there's gonna be seven bigs on the flop, and you're gonna have seventeen in your stacks. You're like a two point three SPR, and that that, that kind of sucks to have rainbow aces versus yeah, like. Of course. Yeah. This guy just says you have aces. <laughs> you just do what I had every time, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, Fees is and... streaming right now. I, I just remembered. What well, Ryan's the, the streaming man himself. Now? He's starting yeah, up again? We, no, he's literally doing it to, to stream high stakes PLO and to talk shit. Like we set him up a stream because he wants to talk shit about people. So nice. after this, we, after we finish this review, we can hop into his chat also. Nice. Yeah, he went through a stretch of playing a bunch of ACR PLO. He went in a pretty sick swing. Yeah, we were. I, I was actually living with him at that time. No shit. Nice. Yeah, we, old roommates. Um, yeah, so get caught in two spots. Pretty funny. I guess we'll just <laughs> always get it in here really close actually like one spr but like think about their two colors like this just uh, sucks. dude I, that's a good point the calling range is going to be so broad way heavy like smack, it, yeah, shit. Gonna smack this in the face i actually might find a fold here damn yeah it's just like a lot of king queen jack queen jack type. i guess it's very like yeah i guess one good thing is that mm -hmm. if i pot it it's never it's very rarely gonna go three ways like small binds either shoving or folding so like it's never gonna go cold cold so that's pretty good at least yeah yeah but yeah i think but check it's... folding does make a lot of sense in the more I look at it this is a terrible yeah man. yeah just like it's, it's just like think about both of their ranges i'm, I'm not as worried about Car caracal or the big blinds range yep. because they're gonna because so actually let me rephrase that if this was like a 10k PLO final table and everyone's playing well, I would be worried about the range because they're going to be they're not they're actually going to be folding at a high frequency because if the small blind calls, if you look at your stack size, the big blind should literally never be playing anything right now. It should just be folding fucking everything because the probability of you getting it on the flop is really high, therefore they're going to ladder super often. So the big blind has to be entering the pot crazy tight here. Like crazy crazy tight if they're playing well. But they're not at this final table. Um, but that's how it would work in a vacuum if everyone's playing perfectly, is that the big blind just needs to fold at a stupidly high frequency, like 90% or something like that. Yeah. And we would just balance our checks here with all of our top sets. What else would we check here to protect our aces? Um, never checking aces. We want to bet. We want to be potting like 
Wait, we're never checking yeah. aces here? Oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Excuse me, excuse me. Like, um, ace On an ace, uh, okay. Yeah, like, ace, ace, king. Yeah. I, I forgot to say the last thing. Yep, um, yep. But, like, you can check some aces. You can check these bad aces and check fold them. Um, you're some top sets, but top sets that also have backup, like king, king, queen to block their straight draws. Yeah, would we ever want to well. find a check back or like jack, jack, 10, 9 suited? No, I don't think so. Yeah, we just have too much value yeah. there with the king higher. Yeah, figure. you're, you're going to get some, you're going to get called by all the kings. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Ever yeah, checking back at hand like king, jack, xx? No, not king, jack, not robust enough. It may, like, maybe king, queen, jack, 10, maybe. Okay. But, like, but it just, like, it's okay if they fold in that spot, right? Like, Dude. you don't, like, it's, it's, it's PLO. If you have king, queen, jack, 10, and they fold, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. no, that makes sense. I love the idea of a robust equity as well. I love that term. It makes so much sense. Yeah, that's a Chris Wainer coin term. Homie gets it in into two ranges that should be strong as hell. And they both <laughs> smiles, like, smiles when he get, <laughs> Smiles when he gets two folds. <laughs> They never saw it coming. Never. Uh, and here, I'm guessing I just folded. Otherwise, I would have shown it. Um, this one you're actually you're you're allowed to play a call with that one. Interesting. To a min raise, uh, because your hand, your um, you're at a stack to pot ratio, like less than twenty bigs. Where if you flop any two pair combination, you're allowed to just pot it into him. Okay. Uh, so this is so this is probably gonna be closer to a call. It's super cut off because four five six is bad, but like four five six double, and there's very little IC. There's one person who's close to you, so your ICM is not I mean, like yeah. It's four of us so all the same. Yeah, the two, like... exactly. Um, what's your worst double suited hand you would defend to? Enter. My worst. I I don't have that off the top of my head, so I don't want to give it. Uh, but it's I'm not gonna be defending like. Deuce three seven nine double. Okay. I'm gonna be folding that. That's what I was thinking. Uh, Deuce three x. So. Yeah. This is. Oh no! Up. It looks like I did go post flop. It was open call call. Oh, oh no 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 no! Around no, no. In the flop. Oh, if the small God. blind calls, you are just folding everything, <laughs> everything, unless you can squeeze, like. Because it's the same thing that I talked about with the hand before. You're you're so disincentivized from entering the pot yeah. when somebody with a shorter chip stack it enters the pot. Plus, this hand plays atrociously multi ways. Yeah. Like you have like pair straight bad straight job bad. The reverse and platters are just so bad here. Yeah. yeah, just gnar. All right. Well, what do I do? At least I find the fold. I thought for a long time about calling shoving, but yeah, I found the fold. Shove. Yeah, all, all not good. Uh, Why did you decide to play mixed game? Like, you want to make some content, play some mixed game today? Mix I want to make content today. That was the main thing. And I, I like, nice. party are running more PLO tournaments, and I just know they're soft. Like, players have oh, to be oh, bad on them. Yeah, they're all, everyone's atrocious. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured if I just get a basic understanding, I could, I could be like a decent winner on them. Like, Honestly, even like a 20% yeah. winner, I'm, I'm taking that. Dude, if you, the, the, there's about four hours of PLO tournament content in the course, or like three hours, three and a half hours of PLO tournament content. If you just watch all that, you're going to be a, a winner in these games. Like just doing this, I'm Good. giving you pretty. I'm giving you a lot of that, not all of it, because yeah, we have yeah. a lot of like monker spots. But if you watch that stuff, you will be a winner in PLO tournament. By the way, that that tournament course is the bonus course for launch week, but it's valued at three hundred no. bucks. No, the advance the tournament course is a part of the advanced PLO mastery. Okay. And the add-on course is the live PLO dominance. So if you want to get really good at live PLO, we made a five hundred dollar add-on course for okay. live, and then the tournament stuff is inside of the main course. Sick. Yeah. Good question. Ooh, double suited kings on the button. What do you do? <laughs> um, I ooh, this is interesting when he limps. I I want to, I want to pot it here. That's what I'm. Yes, you do. Thinking. Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. Potting is for sure the right play. Oh, you got a ladder. Nice. Yeah, didn't mean to say that happened. Nice. Dude, this Y rack guy just wanted so much tension. I know IQ six. That's, that's one of the new. That's the one of the weird things about. I'm like so, Ooh, still the cool. streaming streets. Like the humans are just so weird when it comes to streaming. Dude, people are so fucking trash. It's disgusting. Like just prepare <laughs> yourself. Like it's the most disgusting shit. Yeah. Like, so they'll like, just make, they'll make a... accounts all day and just like torment you. Spam your through. face. Yeah. yeah. I, I just I have a heavy ban hammer. In my chat. Yeah, same. I mean, I put it in a 24 hours follows only mode so they can't like keep making accounts. Oh, that's smart. Um, 
yeah this is a pot because specifically for this you don't want to play this in multi ways it's yeah, just so good yeah, it makes so much like, sense this is so, yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm like i'll go position i'll take anyone multi way let's go eight ways i don't care Nah, this is this makes sense to pot up pre it's so bad to like yeah. this and yeah. checking back flop is super standard yeah checking back flop is great your you, your hand is literally trash your hand is dust yeah. <laughs> unless it's, you turn it's like, nice to have a five <laughs> now your hands dust <laughs> like, it's, it's, just, it's just especially think about the think about the limping ranges for the small and the big blind like eight um, six five three clubs yeah, yeah. you have you have spades diamonds all right here we go uh he would have limped it here yeah, for sure and i would have checked back with ten ten five four and that's fine so you give up what are you doing on the swap? Actually, I got a gutter here to a straight as well, and I have the turn of hearts blocker. I mean, I check back though. How much ASX do I really have? I don't think it'd be a terrible bet, but I'm just gonna check it. Although I don't think it's I a love, bad bluff. No, I love betting here because yeah. I because I'm betting my so it's kind of what I was talking about before. Um, we're, if I have a ten high flush, I'm going to be betting the flop, checking the turn, betting the river. Uh, yeah, that's flop, that's check. the line that you would take if you, on on monotone boards a lot of the time. It's small bet flop, check turn, small bet river. Unless you have the nuts, then you go bet, bet, bet. Um, and so in this spot, if I have a 10 high flush, I'm going bet, check, bet. And so with the 10 of hearts, I'm going to mirror that and play a bet as well. Is that because out of position is going to play a pure check call with his nut flushes or his better flushes? Um, it's, yeah, it's because we're not going to be able to get three generate. Say that again? We're not going to be able to get three straights. We're not gonna, yeah, we're not gonna be able to get through streets. That's exactly okay, correct. Okay. And it also makes our bluffs cheaper, right? So we're not getting through streets. It makes and it makes our bluffs cheaper. Um, and in the spots where we have more fold equity because we have the king of hearts or we have a range advantage, we can start to play more aggression. Dude, I'm. I feel like learning PMO must be so much tougher than learning no limit. It depends on how you approach it. Um, it definitely, if you're coming from a hold'em background. It's not easy because you just there's so much rewiring that needs to go on in your brain. Like I'll watch your tournament streams, just checking in every once in a while, and my brain's like, "Wait, you have blockers. You should be fucking check raising this dude." But it's like, yeah. no, he can just have top pair and get it in because it's it's hold. Yeah, top yeah. Pair. yeah. Um, whereas my brain is the exact opposite. It's like, it's just it's so important to think about how blockers and how blockers and how range interactions work, and so it just takes a long time. But that's why we built the course is because it's like, all right. You don't know shit about PLO. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have one of the bad, most badass PLO players on the planet build it from zero to through the river. It's like we built pre-flop, flop, turn, river, and we taught you how to think about it from a GTO Monker perspective because yeah. you have to rewire your brain. Do you think it's harder to become the best PLO tournament player in the world or the best no limit hold'em player? The best no limit hold'em player. Yeah, that's just because it's more competition, though, I guess, right? That's that's probably an yeah. easy question. Also, so like in terms of peel, so I played the I played the twenty five k last year, and the best players that I played against were like Ben Tolerin, um, Yanni Yakermeyer, and who else was really really good uh, at tournament specifically? I'm trying to think. Ben Bo was really good. Ben Lamb was pretty good as well. Um, but like a lot of the dudes that are really good at PLO suck at tournaments, and a lot of dudes that are dudes that are good at tournaments suck at PLO. Like that's that's just the way that it is, which is why I actually have put a decent amount of time into PLO tournaments because it's like a pretty good niche if you're good at both of them. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to be like okay in PLO tournaments, just like I can beat the fifty fives and one oh nines. Like that'd be amazing be, for me. Dude, I think you'll be able to beat the fifty fives and one oh nines. Nice. And have it and have it not be close if you put in a little bit of work. Man, I, I just think because like when you have four cards as well, you have to think about so much more. So I feel like if everyone just like gave up no, no limit and went into PLO, like the level of intensity will be ridiculous for like the very top tier players. Oh, dude, when I um, if you watch my streams, I've actually been battling against one of the best players in the world. I'm not gonna say who it was um, mm -hmm. because I don't want to out him. But when him and I are playing hands, it's fucking nasty. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it, it just it, it's like we, we literally played two thousand big blind pots on stream yesterday against each other in spots where he was bluffing on one of them, and then like like he just like took a ridiculous lot. Like it was just like it's just sick shit because the like especially with Munker, your brain just starts to think. Your when you really get good at PLO, your brain just starts to think about how both ranges overlapped with each other. Like it yep. just becomes like you see the picture in your head of what who's supposed to have what where and it and it just dictate like once you can do that there's just a structure that you follow and the people that are the best at um 
the people that are the best at building the range interactions are really good at just finding tons of creativity. Yeah, that's thing. that's what's so beautiful about it. There are so many variables. You can do so much more because of that. That's what I love about it. Yeah, yes, and it simplifies it sometimes too because there's just like like in Hold'em, you you can be so precise with like I need this one combination. Yeah. Whereas in, whereas in PLO, you're like, all right, well I have these two cards. I just need these two cards. And then when you get really really good, you can use the third card. And then when you're like the best in the world, uh -huh. you're actually thinking about all four cards. <laughs> like you can add more complexity as it goes. Anyway, yeah, this turn is also a sick turn spot for you. You should be betting yeah. this turn with 100% frequency because now you block, like when you check back the flop, you don't have as many flushes, but now you block the straight as well. You just literally block fucking everything with your Are hand. Are we more inclined to check back queen 10 here? On the turn? On the flop. On the flop? Uh, with no hearts in it, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm thinking like, does it make sense for us to check back flop and bet turn that's why i did check because i felt like if i'm betting queen 10 on the flop i shouldn't be battling this turn very much so remember you have lots of different queen tens yeah in you have queen tens with hearts and without hearts i also have like king three king jack that can barrel turn yep yeah okay i i see your brain trying to be like okay what hands would i do with this dude i'm just and... thinking about two cards only i'm not thinking about all the other fucking yeah. combos i can have yeah and that's and that's why a lot of the times you just like look at the cards on the board and look at the cards in your hand and be like, all right, do the cards in my hand, block the nuts on this street. Okay, can I arrive in this in some way? Like, do I not like given the way the preflop showed up, do I have less ace ace than him? Yes or no? Okay. You can just you can simplify it and make it a little easier for yourself once you have those main constructs down. It just takes a little bit of time. Alright, we lost the player. Let's see what I fold on the button here. Double suited A side, pretty easy fold. If it folds to us though, are we working in any limps here? Um, Three stacks six, even with us. Eight, four, nine. No, not with your stack sizes. 12 bigs. You, you only want to enter the pot if you have a probability of generating folds. So I would actually pot your hand on the button, uh, given how short the two, because the two blinds are disincentivized yep. from entering the pot. And you'd fold um, versa jam? Yeah, full versus gem. Sicko mode, I love it. Yeah, that's exactly correct. All right, this seems like a... I want to say easy fold with this guy being short. Very easy fold. One second. Yes. That is ace, what about um, ace, four, king, five, not flush draw? Folds. Fold, okay. we just like fold fucking everything. Yeah, just fold everything. Makes sense. Like, you, uh, fold everything unless you can generate tons of fold equity from the other player. Because also remember, yeah. okay, let's say that the rules were reversed and it was the 3 million stack in the button and then the 1.4 in the small blind. Um, what was I going to say? You, you're you much more likely to take 3 bet bluffs if the big stack's the one raising on the button. But it is. Not, it's, you're still not supposed to do it very often unless you have like a really good hand that generates lots of fold equity. And you would uh, you would have three bet folds in this spot of twelve big blinds. No, I, 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 no, I wouldn't. I would not have three bet folds in okay. this spot. That's okay. why you need you need to have like ace queen jack ten. That's your bluffs, like type of, like. My bluff stack offs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's your bluff stack offs. It's okay. stuff that, that. Like p bluffing and pilo, um, on early streets is a lot about generating card removal and lots of equity, and then on later streets is about um, using pretty much only card removal. Okay. Like as, as, as ranges are wider, you go top to bottom in terms of what you're bluffing with and how much equity you have. And as ranges get more narrow, blockers become way more important. Yeah. Okay, someone keeps asking in chat, um, what do you think about six card PLO cash online? I think it's trash. Uh, I, I think that you just, it, like you have six cards now, and so you just have to nut pedal. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, people play doesn't it sound very fun. It, no, people play it poorly, and so you can make money at it. But I think it's a very unfun game. Oh, uh, so yeah, this is a full, especially when there's a call the yeah. small blind. Oh my god, this is like a tank nuclear. Like you just start snap folding it, not thinking about it. I feel like I just can't believe I'm tanking here as well. I'm just like so in love with it, dude. But that's that's one of the most fa that's one of the most beautiful things before you learn PLO is that you I got four play. cards. You can just run good, like. Yeah. That's how people like, and then you're now you're gonna start thinking about the spots next time you play a tournament, and you're gonna not. It's gonna be harder for you to just be in flow, kind of a thing, because yeah. you're gonna be questioning all your shit. But it's <laughs> good because like not, you're entering the learning curve. Dude, there will be zero flowness. Yeah. Whereas now you're just like ah fuck it like like let's get after it. 
Ooh. Ooh, aces on the button? So I want to pop this. Um, uh, yes, yes, and you get to play a limping range sometimes. I want to play a limping range with my worst ASX, preferably offsuit here. Um, at this SPR, there is no really bad ASX because you only have 10 bigs. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. So I'm trying to, like, I actually would have to look at this spot, but with the, with this, like, I think you're probably raising super narrow, like super, super narrow, like 6% of hands or something like that. But I think that aces are going to be a part of it, is, is the way it's going to come out. Yep. Okay, so putting is not bad, but it's just like, it's PLO and you're about to get, and also I'd have to look at the, oof, two eights on the flop. I, I felt What's more inclined to pot it because this guy was short as well. Would you just still stick to a min raise though? No, potting is perfect. Potting, okay. you want to generate, if you're entering the pot in this position, you need to generate maximum fold equity. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> in my, I think I believe I check back in real time because I got tripped, so I don't need any protection. Uh, you can bet one big blind. That's pretty sick as well. Yeah, because like betting, you can bet one big blind and have a folding range to one big blind. He just leads pot into me. No, I mean, he should be three betting that hand pre. Yeah, that's a good hand. What the hell? I didn't yeah. remember like looking at the actual value of his hand. I remember just like seeing blue cards and not realizing I had a boat until the end. It's <laughs> <That's> nice. <laughs> yeah, his his hand is a snap. Get in when you have an ace and a king. You block aces and kings, and you have two queens now. Just like just get it in. What do you do here? Um, this seems like a, f a pretty clear fold. That's correct. It's a fold. Because the, the, the big blind is the big stack. So you're just supposed to be tight yeah. as hell there. Um, even if he's small blind though, do we mind raising? Um, nah, we're just gonna, like, well, I mean, if he's small blind, we're in the big blind. You're saying if, if he's- If these the, stacks, uh, oh, oh, wait, if, oh. uh, if these were swapped around here. So if um, Warwick was uh, the big you can play a, you can play a min raise actually because you're a lot because you can because rack is supposed to play tight as hell. Yep. And and you can play a min raise to have a folding range to the big stack. And we can call three bet so small blind three bet if they were reversed right with some hands. No, no, no. I mean no. with some hands, but not this one. <laughs> yeah. You just like when when there is a when this is the when there's a small stack there, you just gotta just like wait for him to die. Yep. Like the vacuums on the ICM vacuums in PLO tournaments are not, like, like it's in the course. So I don't want to give away like too many spoilers, but there are just spots where it's like, okay, you're on the button, um, and in a normal spot, you'd be raising uh, forty percent of hands. You raise two percent of hands, like yeah. it's just like you you just don't get to raise because that's like you're folding some aces. You're folding half of your ace ace combinations in some spots. So yeah, the the main takeaway with that is equities run way closer to no limit. So like we just hate doing that with the ICM doesn't make any sense. That's exactly correct. Yeah, yeah that's exactly correct. Uh, check this back. Surprise, he's limping. I feel like he should have a heavy RFI range. Oh, here. no, he no, he should just be beating the fuck. Yeah. Fuck out of you. Like, you just, you just need to... Like, he, he needs to be raising at, like, 80% frequency. You need to be folding mm. a ton. Yeah. Interesting turn card. Are we wasting a hand by not betting? Like, what other hand are we going to bet if we check this? Um, You can bet this turn. You can bet yeah. one big blind. What about like, especially because he, he especially because he didn't raise pre um you actually you're gonna you're actually gonna be at a range advantage when he limps you're gonna have more ace x and yeah like X. and so when the flop goes check through you're actually not supposed to bet a lot of flops just because you need to keep the pot as small as possible so you're gonna get to bluff some turns and you're going to want to check back the flop with your worst ace x the ones that don't have as much robust equity i'm gonna be wanting to check back the middling ones so i'm going to be wanting to bet my worst ace x as bluffs i'm going to be wanting to bet my best ace x for value and i'm going to check back my middle ones okay you want to bet your worst ace x as a bluff yeah because that's the that'll make it so that they're more likely to fold and then we generate and then we generate aggression okay because remember, top pair in PLO isn't a thing on, when, yeah, two more, when yeah. two more when two more things come out. Yeah, top pair, so, yeah that's a good point. It's so easy for them to catch up. Yep, exactly. Okay. 
Wow. So you just you just bet fold the flop with like ace those four five for example. If yeah. you check. Oh, that's okay. great. That's a great great combination because because ace two four five also could turn wraps, which means we get to check back our bet twice depending on the wrap card. Ah, uh -huh. so check back a guard or on bet two per. Yep. And easy fold here. Of course, Very I find the fold. <laughs> the like the easy the easiest fold of all time. I know. <laughs> I just snap caught it as well. Oh, swirl up. Now what? <laughs> okay, so checks run the flop, I think. Yep. And I find a call because he would have bet all his king is on a flop. That's what's going through my mind. That's not true. Yeah, he wants to cut, theory, he, he makes wants, no sense. Yeah, he wants the he wants Crimea River to be able to find bluffs on the turn, as well as you. Mm. And so, he, like, like if he has King Jack, for example, oh, oh, he checks back a he checked back a boat as well. Is that any good when a nine run out? I guess I could have King Nine, but um, with six uh, bottom boat, you can check back sometimes. I'd okay. I'd rather play a small sizing. Now you said we pick up aces two percent at a time in PLO. Yeah, two, about like two point three percent of all. <laughs> That's so are cool. Aces. Yeah. Well, that means we pick up a pair two percent of the time, right? So, oh, wait, no, so here I'm limping. I'm, li I'm limping a hundred percent here. You're limping a hundred percent. Why though? You said yeah. you wanted to pot the last one. The the ICM um, distribution has not changed at all. We, we have uh, the, the, the big stack the, given given the way the ICM works. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and then this this flop is a uh, a bet. Oh, I don't need any protection though. <laughs> he ain't got enough slow straw. But yeah. I um but you but you can generate value. I can, yeah, get and, calls and, from a bunch of other flush draws on the race side. Yeah. He's defending flush draws, yeah, yeah, you just like you just want and also you have him he has you slightly covered. Ooh. Close. Having the four in your hand here is stupid. I important. know, I loved it. Yeah, it's yeah, you're you're just never folding with the four in your hand. What sizing is supposed to be you know, on the river here? Uh, I just fucking. I go all in because like it's only two third pot. I can't think of another sizing here. You bet a little. You leave yourself with like. Oh, K. of course, because we can run it back up and get letters. Yep. And then obviously, if he goes all in, you call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, but yeah, it's just like stupidly. It's really important here, to to do that. I kept that telling him thank you every time I won a pot. My buddy was telling me to, to be nice to him. <laughs> Such uh, a good feeling. So, an awful hand to raise. We probably could play a limp with him in a big blind, or maybe just actually uh, no, folding yeah, no. is way better. Folding is way better. Fold, fold, folding number one, limping number two. Okay. Because now you have, now you're the second, when you're the second biggest chip stack in this situation, you're folding everything. You're just like never playing a hand until the other two people die. Yep. Yeah. Um, would you just like always limp this if you know that big blind's atrocious and like super nitty? Um, honestly, the ICM vacuum might be so strong yeah. that it doesn't matter how bad they are because yeah. they always are going to get four random cards. Yeah. I see a bit of third here. I probably should see a bit of quarter on a board that dry. Uh, yes. Even like twenty percent with like yeah. Oh, oh yeah, you can, you can, you can go super small. Yeah, it's just a big blind will do. Yeah, exactly. Actually, yeah, literally about the minimum. All right, so here he min raised and Bolt. yeah, fold is what I'm thinking right now. Yeah, sorry, I'm gonna I'll stop giving the answer so that we can like you can, you can, use your new path brain. Yeah, for exactly. The it's exciting. Turn. <sighs> I guess small bet is kind of good. He usually bet most of his best queen x on the flop all the turn, and does we block ten nine? So a small bet for a big blind is good here, I think. Um, close. I think that your absolute hand strength isn't good enough. You might you would need like ace queen nine versus king queen nine. Okay. Um, because because he can check call ace queen, on the yeah. in this spot. Yeah. And and you're also not you're not gonna get check raised super often, but it's kind of a disaster when you get check raised here. And he's and if he's good, he's just gonna like literally any little bit of aggression that he can take, like any one side card that gives him an aggression thing, he's gonna take against you given the ICM vacuum. And so it just makes most sense for you to just be checking and taking literally no aggressive actions against this person and giving them a chance to fuck you up. 
Now this is a really interesting spot because it's only two big blinds, but the bounty is so minimal. I wasn't sure uh, how to approach it. Like, like the. What, do you, what would you do now? I want to fold it because there's no fold equity. I don't think there's any fold equity at least. And he has half his stack in. I mean, the bounty's worth twenty six bucks. I guess like it's worth a little bit more because I could win a tournament maybe like twenty five percent of the time or something. So like I have to realize more of the bounty, but like. The pay jump is 70 bucks and the bounty is 26. I just want to fold this one here. And if I keep him short as well, I get to bully this uh, middle stack more. So that, so um, your last point, in my opinion, is the only point that is important because this hand is four cards and four cards is enough equity to stack someone. Okay. Um, <laughs> like you got four cards. They're they, like, they can, they can make a flop. You can make a flush. Like you're going to have 38%. Uh, I don't know. Also, you're not... yeah, this guy doubling up to like three and a half, four big ones. doesn't even matter. We still get to no, apply the exact yeah, same pressure. You, yeah, exactly. And so in this spot, just like take the spot, get the bounty um, and get the ladder. I'm, I'm fine with how you played it in real time. Me too. Yeah. Oh, the two. Oh, did you just get there? Oh my god. Big. Dude, it takes it's so hard for me to realize it straight until like I just really like pause it. Yeah. Alright, so you get used to it. It's easy so, so, fold here. So uh so question, what what should you be thinking about given these stock sizes? Uh, I wanna have an opening range of something like ten percent and I wanna be doing some limping. You wanna have an opening range of like five or four percent okay. literally yeah it, it, it just like so this is this um going through the hand history reviews that chris and i did the thing that we really learned the most was that like there are spots where you're supposed to be raising like let's say you have a big stack you're supposed to be raising a lot you should be indexing even more than you think you should in the spots where you're supposed to be raising a lot like if yeah. you have a big stack and in the spots where you are kind of in the icm bubble or the icm vacuum you you're like oh, I should play pretty tight here. Over index way more than you think you should. Yeah, that's yeah. that's like that's the way you have to think about it. I love that. That's a great thing to remember. It simplified a lot more. Yeah, um, it's a good heuristic. What if uh, small blind and I have the same stack? What does our opening range look like? It goes from five percent to what? Probably like to like a twelve to thirteen percent okay, range. Cool. Like like you you can like you can play somewhat normally. But also you can build. But you, because of ICM, you can build limping ranges. Yeah. Uh, eh, it's like really? a really even with the backdoor flush yeah. draw, bro. I would feel so, so, folded without the backdoor flush draw. So ace nine is pretty close, but not having a nine, not having a ten jack or queen in your hands, kind of bad because they. Are, you also have to think about like proximity, um, and so it's if you have a ten jack or queen in your hand, it makes it less likely he has a king. The queen, the most, the queen's the most important because hands that have a king, if he's limping and entering and be pipping, he's more likely to have a queen in it as well because that has connectivity. And so you have to think about that. Um, that's a little bit more of an advanced concept. Um, it's just like proximity blocking is what it's called. Yep. But so so in this spot, when we don't have a 10 jack or queen, we're going to get barreled off a lot on the turn. There's going to be lots of turns that suck yeah, for us. Like, li like there's literally no good turn cards. And so if he's playing appropriate, bluff uh, appropriate aggression frequencies, like this might be a call, but it's very close. Uh, Limp here. He leads into me on ace high. I'm not sure how much you want to lead here. That's my limps on ace high. Um, it's it's fine. In so if we were playing, um, no, this it's actually like because he can have ace ten, he can have ace seven, he can have pocket sevens, he can have pocket tens. Yep. Uh, he can have like ace eight nine deuce. He can have ace jack nine five. All of those are are fine leads. Okay. I play a call which seems horrendous. Uh, story checks out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just playing to bink the nine of spades. Uh, limp that's, a, that's something, that's a huge mental game thing that happens in PLO, actually. Let's say you have a double pair hand. And I, I do this kind of as a meme on my stream a lot of the time. Maybe I shouldn't be enforcing bad habits. Uh -huh. But a lot of the times you're like, all right, I just, I, I just need to flop one set here. And then like you tell yourself <laughs> you just want to flop one set. Yeah. So you have two, you, you, you have a 25% chance to flop a set if you have two pocket pairs in your hand, right? It's okay. one in four. That's a cool and so, set. I'll remember that. Well, it's one, it's, it's one in eight for, for Hold'em. Oh, of right? course. Of course. Have a, yeah, so it's one in four PLO. About one in four. It's like, it's like one in seven and a half, I believe. For yeah, I, yeah. so it's, it's like pretty close to PLO. And so your brain is just going flop a set, flop a set, flop yeah. a set. But it, but And then like it, you get this weird emotional come down that you're kind of interacting with every single time you don't flop a set. 
and that creates instability in your poker game. So like yeah. I'll meme it up on my stream, but I'm, eternally I'm trying really hard not to focus on that. Cause if I, even if I don't flop a set, I still have an opportunity to play the hand perfectly, like, or as best as I can. Yeah. So I'm here, he limps, check, check, flop. I mean, I guess I could play a lead on this flop. I've got, I can, I've got good robust equity. I've got top pair, um, but yeah. checking isn't bad either. Now, once I do check, check on the flop, what do we like on the turn? I like betting the turn with the king of diamonds in my hand. Okay. Um, I would, I would bet, I would not bet pot though. I'd bet one big blind. Yeah, this seems pretty bad. Yeah. And also uh, betting one big blind on the flop too is good. Yeah. So I think you have a good intuition to that. Because so when you bet big on the turn here, you just you you make you make it so easy for him to play straightforward. He's just like yeah, continuous. Yeah. yeah. Whereas when you bet one big blind, just like you you generate aggression, and now he has like his worst king x, his like pair plus straight draw type stuff. All of them are in a really bad spot. Now another question I have about limping. What's like, what is our worst hand we want to limp? Because this seems like close to it. Uh, at 25 big blinds, I don't have the limping ranges perfectly defined, so I don't want to tell you them. Uh, yep. This hand is pretty bad, though. Yeah. Like, I would, I'd be on the folding fence for this hand, I think. Also, like, your your um, your trips hands, like your 10, 10, 10, 5 with a suit are going to be folds as well. Um, this hand's not, like, horrid, so maybe it gets into the limping range at this amount of big blinds, but it's pretty close. Are you saying 10, 10, 5? Um... 10, 10, 10, 5. Oh, three of times. course. Okay. Yeah, three times. Yeah, makes sense. This is this is a good flop for you. What do you do on the flop? Um, well, I guess. Okay, I'm going to assume he never leads a set here. I feel like there'd be like a pure check raise all of your sets. How's he supposed to have a set when you have all those cards in your hand? Well, just he can still have a set. That's my point, but. He would never lead a set. Like that's the first thing, right? He would he would never want to lead a set. He'd play like a pure check raise with them. Um, you check raise nines, lead twos and fives, probably. Okay, okay, that that makes sense as well. Um, yeah, I just want to. I, I guess I want to get money in here, but I'm trying to figure out why that makes sense. It's it's such an odd board to lead. It's, it's rather dry. Tough, tough I guess I, I want him to stack off with like bottom pair, gutter, bottom pair, open ender. But is he going to stack off for that for 25 bigs? Yeah. Well, if he's not, then playing a call makes way more sense. But then if we're playing a call, this what's going to be our, uh, our ideal raises will be our, all of our sets. Or 6, 7, 8, 9. 6, 7, 8, 9 is amazing. That's, that's a wrap. That's what you call it, right? A wrap. Yeah, it's a wrap. Exactly. <sighs> so, Hang like, your, your what pair, are the odds of pair... us hitting a straight with 6, 7, 8, 9 here? Um, over two streets. Yeah. Uh, oh, I should know this. I'm tired, man. Uh, it's like it's around fifty percent. Um, it's a it's a wrap. Yeah, you're you're gonna get like getting in it with a wrap here. You're gonna be um about a coin flip with a set. Okay, cool. Good to know. Anyway, play a raise, but I'm guessing you prefer a call with this combo. So this is really close, actually. Um, the reason being that it's close is that you have the eight in your hand. So having hit a lot of his leads are gonna be like nine eight seven. Uh huh. Type stuff. Yeah. Or like five eight seven. So raising like I would probably rather play a call with all three pairs because it it's gonna be easy for you to play turns really well. Like if the turn bricks off any of the straight cards, you're gonna be able to call it a super high frequency. If it's any high card, you're gonna be able to call it a super high frequency. Like it, it, the ace like or the king queen jack ten type stuff. All is actually very good for you. But the the really bad cards for you are like the sixes, the sevens, yeah. the eights. Um, like if I raise, he calls and he leads on the six, I hate life. Yeah, exactly. He's actually not supposed to lead that too too often because your bluffs actually are wraps. Uh -huh. So he's not gonna he's not gonna get to play a lot of leads on that. Um, generally speaking, the the turns that the out of position player gets to lead the most are the board pairing turns. Yep, that makes sense. Oh, I remember this end now. I was super surprised you checked back pro. I mean, yeah, yeah once he just snaps once he pots it you're never folding yeah you gotta like you just gotta yellow get it in you, you feel real bad about getting it in here for 25 bigs yeah even with the speech play like patrick was like oh he's definitely like got a set here with the speech play and i was like yeah i don't like it but good luck you just have like aces yeah this is atrocious by such him. a random check back like you would never want to check that combo back pre and if you do you're never blowing the pot are you in that spot um no i'm 
ch I'm raising pre leading is that's actually a great combination to lead because you have the straight draw. Yep. Uh, with the six, but I'm lead calling, and then on the five I'm never folding. The five's a great turn, so I'm check calling, check calling, probably. Yep. All right. Uh, this is kind of odd. I feel like this is a limp at twelve or thirteen. Yep. Limp is correct. Yeah, but exactly I just went, all right. I just keep forgetting how much equity four cards has versus two medium pairs. It's stupid how much equity. I luck boxes yeah. flop as well. This is a, yeah, it's funny. You say that you luck box flop, but my brain goes, did you? <laughs> like, like, because if you're getting it in here, you're always behind. 100% of the time you get it in. If he has ace three, four, yeah. the flush draw, like, a, like king queen five nine with a flush draw you're just like at best you're close to a coin flip just want to limp this hand as well i wonder if i want to play uh, a limp cold no, no. though uh here actually you can get it in jacks nine for nine deep. you're okay with that yeah i'm okay yeah. with jacks for nine and tens you would limp i would probably around 15 limp but around like nine okay nine ish probably get it in it's fine because at 9, uh, when he calls pre, you're at SPR 1, which means you're just plotting the flop and getting okay. it in. Cool. I check back, because I'm really confused, but checking back seems awful here with this SPR. I mean, off, off I'd these bet one, stacks. Yeah, I'd, I'd, bet, I'd bet one big blind. Yeah, I don't know what... I need I need a lot of protection with Jax here, and I also have, like, a gutter to straight here. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly correct. This is and a fun I, final table. I guess I'd want to defend with this coming up hand here versus... I mean, does he have a min raising range? Is he only potting it or limping it? He should. He should. He should only be potting or limping. You should never have a min okay. raising range. And we would want to defend am de versus I'm, pot with this one. I'm defending. No, I'm defending. Wow. Dude, okay. you, you got four cards. They're kind of close to each other, and yep. you're gonna be able to pot the flop when you make literally any sort of a pair, any sort of a straight draw. Like you're just leading pot into him anytime you yep. remotely touch the board. So this this is probably in the full D range. The uh -huh. King three, four, five. <laughs> Like this, like king three, four, five rainbow, because um at lower big blind levels, the higher cards become way more important, because just top pair is king. Of course. And so this this combination is is dust. At would this. you ever limp this with one suit, double suited? Uh, double suited, I would raise it and get it in because of okay. double suit is just really good. Uh, but rainbow, no bueno, I don't think. Do you have much of a limp raising range here of these stacks? Do you have a trapping with aces? No, never trapping. Okay. Um, not with aces, at least. And I don't. I don't think so, because it's just so much better to get him to fold for a big mm -hmm. one. Like yeah. you're, it's PLO. Like maybe I can play limp. I can play some limp shoves, but they're not gonna be. Um, like, fold. maybe he's, I'd, I'd have to think about it. I can't think about it off the top of my head. That's yeah. a good fold, yeah. Limp check back. Interesting turn spot. I guess i mean i guess i mean he doesn't really limp any asex though so i basically have shutdown value here i just want to check fold it don't i i want to bet it because it's less likely he has a full house because remember he needs to use both cards in his hand to to make a full house oh yeah and, and so i like betting this turn because if i make my flush i can actually value better on the river my goodness of course anyway this check all seems terrible check out yeah you want to take you want you want to take aggression with this hand yeah. but not passivity Wait, I hope I should call a fold. Yeah, I call that. I want to hit the straight flush, obviously. Uh, we limp the eights here for thirteen effective. That's fine. That that's actually that actually seems pretty good to me. Check back flop and turn. Turn could maybe be a bet. Actually, I don't have any. Um, I don't block the straights. I might plan to check raise though. Yeah. Um, that that's the exact correct thought process. Cool. You're, you're dude. One coaching session, your brain is insane, calibrating. dude. <laughs> yeah, you're doing good. And I guess I'm happy to for fifteen. This actually, wait, you said you want to start limping tens for fifteen. So if he pots here, I guess we just defend. I would I would defend this for fifteen. Yeah, yeah I would defend this. Um, I would actually leave this flop. Interesting. It's because uh, he limps so little asex. Yeah, exactly. And the king blocks stuff. Like, the king blocks stuff. Backdoor hearts is really good. Uh, and it's just, it's just, like, unlikely that he's going to have a combination that he can call two streets with. Okay. That's awesome. I love it. It's not, like, the best spot for it, but I'd, I I would probably find a bet here. I also find a lot more aggression than most people do, for better or for worse. 
here yet. Uh, I don't see any reason to do anything on the server. I think I was just making sure I'm like, do I have a straight here? What's going on? This, oh, this is when I came into the chat and was like trying to kind of very nicely help. <laughs> it's like, you should. I should just pop this here. Yes, you should. And this is cool, this hand. Mm -hmm. I want to just bet a big blind, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, this is, so this is actually one of those spots where I'd be comfortable betting uh, full pot. Because you don't really want to play this hand over three streets, but you definitely want to play it over two. Because you don't have the diamonds. Uh, yeah. But you, you're, but your your over pair is really good, and your straight draw is really good. Yeah. So we we'd always wanna we want to keep a minute with a flush draw. Without it, we just wanna go for two streets. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We want to just end the hand. We we want to just um push our immediate equity as much as we can. And I should easily bet this turn. I mean, what ASX combos does he have a checking back versus limp? Like none, right? Or like very few at least. No, like bad ones and. He might just have like bad stuff. Is pretty much it. And so you can bet the turn and then pot rivers. So like, you might have like ace, like ace bat, ace rag that you can find two streets of aggression against. Yeah. That's a, that's something that people don't do really well in PLOs. They just like don't follow through enough. I, like if you watch like if you watch my stream, I've been just like following through on triple barrel bluffs in spots where I have range advantages. Yep. At like at high frequency, and people just don't find those follow throughs. And so if you can bet that turn. And then bet river to get those like one pair ace x combinations to fold you're gonna print money in these type of spots especially because people are like just they're too weak very good pot here Glad I pot up. yeah it's perfect and so uh, i guess limping is pretty fine yeah limping's perfect with this combination and this is interesting mm -hmm. uh <laughs> i guess i could pot up and for that is Eight x and six x because I have more a six yep. at limbs. I actually, I love pot. I actually love potting here. You're just, you're just pot calling the spot. Yep. Uh, we can get this in. Definitely. This is a get in. I remember hovering over the deuce. I'm like, I hate having a deuce here. <laughs> just disregarding how good all this is and how short it I is. I mean, at yeah, at at deeper stacks, it's really important. Straight get up. there easy game gg path when's the uh, course the being it, released is it today or tomorrow it's today we just launched so oh. course is out right now advanced PLO mastery course on upstreampoker.com uh it's 999 dollars there is there is plo i i made the plo tournament section in it where we have four no, yeah, there's four tournament videos. I made two theory sections, two theory videos, and then we reviewed the Aussie Millions 25K final table, PLO, which is a sick final table. It's really good. And that, yeah, that's about it. My, my stream is Cookies 1. I stream 5 p.m. PST, Sunday, Monday, and then sporadically throughout the week. And I'm doing... You cut out, Dylan. Fucking what timing? Right on the outro. Right here, give him a follow. He's life, I guess he's got the bankroll at like 10k now. He's trying to turn 5k into 25k, playing pretty aggressive bankroll management, PLO, cash games. So yeah, give him a follow and uh, wish him good luck. Obviously he's an amazing teacher. I feel like I learned, I feel like I became a losing player. I went from a losing player to becoming a winning player. I honestly feel like I could beat the 33s now. I really do believe I could beat them just after that one hour or two hours of coaching. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that video guys, uh, some tech difficulties towards the end there with Dylan, but um, I think we've got the main point across, I'll leave links to his Twitch channel below, and if you guys want to check out the course, links in the description, again there's a PAV promo code, PAV25 to get $25 off any course over $99 at Upswing, so yeah, thanks for watching, links below, and I'll see you next time for a cash game coaching session. And um, I'll see you tomorrow, of course, bye. bye. I don't do handshakes, people.